So now in this next video in flowchart, we're going to continue our discussion on those cell surface structures that we are mentioning and also just get a little bit more detailed in terms of what we classify uh, the cell wall with. And this is going to focus much more so on bacteria as a whole. Our previous video was on cell wall functions within prokaryotes, a bit general, a bit broad. Now we're going to get a little bit more detailed. So we'll entitle this next flowchart cell surface structures, Roman numeral 2. And we are still talking about the cell wall, and so we'll entitle, uh, subtitle this at least, The Cell Wall Part 2. And always keep in mind, right now we're talking about prokaryotes, right? The pro prokaryotic cell wall. We're going to get a little bit more detailed now, uh, like I mentioned previously, because we're going to look at a component that's specific to only the bacterial domain. And that is this component known as peptido. When you think peptide or peptido, think protein, right? And then you have uh, another part of this word called glycan. And when you think glucose, right, glyco, something like that, it's going to give us this belief or this understanding that this is a combination of a protein and a monosaccharide or a polysaccharide, something like that. So those type of things should be already um, ringing in your head from bio one. So what is peptidoglycan? Before I even get into that, let's first mention a couple of uh, key points about this structure that's found within the cell wall within prokaryotes. Now, peptidoglycan is actually only found in the bacterial domain. So that's sort of a side note that I want to put up here. Only found in, and I'm just going to shorten bacteria as BAC, bacteria domain. Where is it then not found? It must not be found in the archaea domain, and it also must not be found in us, our eukaryotic cells. A little bit more on that later. So this is our first important note. Now, what is peptidoglycan? Like I mentioned before, it's two. It's a two-part structure that is actually a polymer. It's a polymeric structure, but we'll just call this a polymer structure. So that means it consists of monomers built up together to give us a larger polymeric structure. What is this polymer specifically? What is the structure that creates this polymer? Well, of course, it's sugars, like I alluded to before. Why sugars? Well, we have this glycan part of the word, right? Sugars cross-linked, and this will make more sense when you look at the figure that I'll mention a little bit later, cross-linked by short polypeptides. Short polypeptides. Tides. So there are both parts of the words right there, peptido, pe polypeptides, glycan for sugars. That gives us our basic poly uh, polymeric structure. So there's many monomers that give us this polymer that's found within the cell wall, within, not prokaryotes actually, but actually just bacteria in this situation. Now, like I mentioned before, peptidoglycan is not found in archaea, and it's also not found in eukaryotes. Okay, so that's another important thing to remember. Uh, peptidoglycan, not, absolutely not, in eukaryotic uh, cell walls. Now, first of all, what we have to remember is that we as eukaryotic cells, of course, don't have cell walls. Our human eukaryotic cell walls, uh, our human eukaryotic cells. But what does have cell walls? There are some eukaryotes that have cell walls, and those are specifically plants and fungi. Both of these have cell walls in their cellular makeup, in their subcellular structure. But what is actually within that? It's not peptidoglycan in that cell wall. In plants, it's actually something that we learned about in Bio 1, a structural polymer known as cellulose. Many different glucose combined through different, um, uh, we have different reactions to combine it into the strong structural component that gives us cellulose in plants. And in fungi, we have chitin, which is that uh, Another polymer based off of many different sugar monomers combining together. And the big thing about chitin was this letter N, right? Remember the N? It's a nitrogen-containing polysaccharide. So we have plants and fungi with their own uh, unique molecules, unique uh, structural molecules within their cell walls. What do they not have? Of course, they do not have peptidoglycan like bacteria. So what can we do with this understanding of peptidoglycan? What is the purpose of understanding it? Um, and this is going to basically be an important understanding of what bacteria are. It's going to be a great way to classify bacteria because peptidoglycan allow us to do something called gram staining, something you've probably heard of before, but we're going to get into the details of what it means to stain this cell wall of a bacteria. What is it going to give us? Gram staining is a process that gives us the following. We'll state that gram staining divides bacteria into two basic ca categories. So we'll say divides bacteria into two basic uh, categories. 
And this is great for us. This is great for us as a biologist because now we get to have two broad categories to separate a huge amount of bacteria, a huge amount. Remember how we said they're so dominant and pervasive? Now we're classifying them a little bit further, and it's easing our understanding of what bacteria are in terms of their structure. And that structure is, of course, at the cell wall, about the peptidoglycan. Now let's see what gram staining really is. Gram staining involves a, a two-staining process. So there's going to be two stains, okay, that we're going to uh, put on the bacteria in question. So the bacteria can be stained. We can literally put two different stains on it, and we're going to have a first stain, which is, of course, going to be the first stain that we put on it. And then if that comes back inconclusive, which I'll talk about in just a second, we're actually going to put a second stain right on the bacteria. The cell wall within bacteria have this structure known as peptidoglycan, this polymeric structure that stains, and it shows up when we stain these bacteria. In the first stain situation, it shows up as a crystal violet stain. Crystal violet is a, just a, a fancy way of classifying something that shows up as purple. Underneath the microscope, this will show up as very clearly purple. Okay, that's our first stain. But let's say this doesn't happen, and I'll explain if that doesn't happen. There's going to be a second stain. That second stain is going to be called not crystal violet, but actually safranin, which is, again, just a fancy way of saying that we're going to show up with something that has a pink color in our gram staining process. So we have the first stain that shows purple, the second stain that shows pink. How is this related to bacteria? Well, here we go. When we divide these up into these purple and pink gram stains, let's say, it gives us two categories, like I mentioned earlier. And those two categories are the following. Gram staining will give us something known as gram-positive bacteria. So we'll write gram-positive. And I'll often abbreviate gram-positive as this G with a plus sign. So what are gram-positive bacteria? Gram-positive bacteria are those that have a cell wall Again, we're focusing on that uh, cell surface structure known as the cell wall. But that cell wall specifically will be with a, and the keyword here is thick, with a thick layer of peptidoglycan. Thick layer of peptidoglycan. So what is peptidoglycan? Let's remember, sugars cross-linked by short polypeptides. This peptidoglycan structure, if it is a lot of it, if there's a lot of it within the cell wall of a bacteria in question, that cell wall will be considered gram-positive, okay? It has a thick layer of peptidoglycan within its cell wall. Now, how is this related to the staining process? Well, if you have a gram-positive bacteria, this bacteria actually will, we will call it retains, retains, it shows up, it keeps a crystal violet staining. So when you have a crystal violet stain show, uh, done on a bacteria, let's say, and that crystal violet stays there, that's going to show a purple colored cell. And if you have a purple colored cell underneath your microscope and you see purple all over the place, you are definitely looking at gram-positive bacteria. Thus, you are definitely looking at bacteria that have a thick layer of peptidoglycan within their cell walls. Why is this of any relevance? This is of huge relevance because if you look at something like penicillin, I'm sure many of us have heard of penicillin. This is an antibiotic. Penicillin is important because it works by looking at, by actually going to the thick layer of peptidoglycan found in many bacteria, many gram-positive bacteria, of course. And what it does is this antibiotic, it kills bacteria. How does it kill bacteria? It actually interferes, penicillin interferes with the peptidoglycan synthesis. So now why would that be uh, very detrimental to the bacteria? That would be very detrimental to the bacteria because its cell wall, its structural component, its surface structure gets interfered by an antibiotic there to kill a bacteria. If you ever want to kill a cell, the number one place you have to focus on is the surrounding structure because if you can destroy the surrounding structure, the protection, everything in the cell will just flow out. Everything in the cell will just explode. And that's exactly what penicillin does. It stops this thick layer of peptidoglycan from forming, and thus it's going to destroy gram-positive bacteria. So we'll say destroys penicillin, which is an antibiotic, destroys G plus for gram-positive bacteria. 
And so that's our first category. And our second and last category in terms of gram staining is, of course, those bacteria that are not gram positive, but gram negative, which I'll usually abbreviate as just G minus. What's the situation here? In this situation, we actually have a cell wall with not a thick layer of peptidoglycan, but this time the cell wall is with a thin. It's a much thinner, still has peptidoglycan, don't get me wrong, but it's just a much thinner layer of peptidoglycan. So this is going to uh, cause actually problems for us, and I'll explain that in just a second. Now, this gram-negative bacteria, let's go back to the staining, if this gram-positive bacteria retains crystal violet, do you think gram-negative retains it? It does not. Gram-negative bacteria does not, does not, retain, and we'll just abbreviate crystal violet as CV. So it doesn't show up purple. What does it show up as? It'll actually be stained in the second staining, right over here, as safranin. It'll be stained by the safranin and show up as not a purple colored cell, but as a pink colored cell. And this is all underneath a microscope. If you see a bunch of pink colored cells, you are dealing with a gram-negative bacteria. So now, the gram-negative bacteria, okay, has a thin layer of peptidoglycan. You know what that means? It actually means that penicillin will not work. It will not be able to really destroy this bacteria because it doesn't have a lot to work with. It doesn't have a lot of peptidoglycan in the beginning uh, at all, so it doesn't really have anything to attack or interfere. Then you might be asking, well, how does it survive? What is it that makes it successful if it doesn't have a lot of peptidoglycan? Because it seems like that's an important factor. In this situation, the outer membrane actually evolved into something much more uh, dangerous for us, at least. The outer membrane evolved to have something that's a bit different. It's called LPS, which stands for lipopolysaccharide. This is incredibly, incredibly toxic to us as humans, and also it induces a fever, okay? For the most part, it induces fever within us. These are a whole different class of bacteria, a whole different class of bacteria that are very difficult for us to control and very difficult for us to medicate against simply because they don't have that thick layer of peptidoglycan to destroy. They have a thin layer, and on top of that, they have LPS, which is a very toxic portion, lipopolysaccharide uh, extension, let's say, of their cell wall that's found within their cell wall, let's not forget that, that induces fever and is, of course, toxic to us. Good summary for everything in terms of gram staining is to look at figure 27.3. Great way to understand gram staining, both the positive and negative side of it, and the whole staining procedure as well.